So let's take a look at some of the polished brushes that we have inside of ZBrush. And the polished brushes do exactly what they sound like. They're going to go ahead and polish your surface. So you can see we've made all this uh, kind of organic kind of muscle structure, but maybe we want to smooth some of this out, polish it out to where it um, is more of an even and uh, better looking surface after we've done this. So let's go ahead and tap B for brushes and then hit P for polish. So you can go ahead and put that on. And you can kind of see with this polish brush, it kind of looks at the surface and it kind of tries to average things out for you. And it kind of does a little bit of a flatten all at the same time. So we can keep working around the model here, like so. Maybe I want to kind of join these things together. So it almost kind of feels like you're erasing out detail. But um, I guess a better way to look at it would be is if you had a car and you had a bunch of dings in the car and maybe there's some hail damage, wouldn't it be great if you can get out a brush and just polish the surface of your car to get it back into the... Um, original shape that it was at before it was damaged. Um, maybe you can kind of think of it that way. So we've polished all this out here. And you can also use the um, smooth with this, so holding down shift, we can smooth after we've polished a little bit. That'll smooth out the surface even more for us. And like I was saying, this polish brush does um, kind of averages out the surface, but it also kind of flattens the surface as well. So you can see if I just keep pushing on that, how it's going to kind of flatten that out. Just something to be um, conscious about so you don't destroy your surface too much. So I could build up a nice edge like this here. This is also nice for um, making hard edge surfaces. So I built this plane here and then if I go along the edge here I can tighten up that edge. Like so. These are some of the new brushes that ZBrush introduced um, in order to help you deal with hard surfaces. And they're really nice brushes. So there's the uh, the regular polish. Um, let's take a look at H polish. Before we do that, I'm going to switch my materials back to the skin shade four. And I think the color was like something maybe around in here. Not so much pink. Maybe something in there. Okay, so let's tap B for our brushes and then hit H for all your H brushes, which the only H brush there is is this H polish. So it automatically just jumps right to that brush. So B and then H, and you're in H polish. So the difference with this brush is going to be quite apparent. Um, you can see as I hover my cursor over my object, this plane of the brush changes depending on where it sits on the surface. With this brush you can see I can set a plane and I can start drawing and it's going to flatten everything to that plane. So maybe I want to get this a little bit here and I can smooth that out. Maybe I want this to be flatter more flat. So I can just drag that out there. 
and I can keep working around my model and just build up some of these hard surfaces. Now if your grid gets in your way and it's just kind of bothering you, just tap Shift P and that'll turn your grid on and off. Sometimes it can be a little bit annoying to uh, see your grid drawing over the top of your model. So you can see with this brush it's really fun to just kind of make some new and interesting shapes depending on where you're at on your model just kind of work your way around. I'm going to make my brush smaller and drag right along here. Draw up in here. So if I hit this edge, and I hit this edge, you can see it's going to build up a nice crisp line for me. Which again, this is really cool for um, making something look like it's been hard surface modeled. And the resolution that we're at right now is not the greatest, right? So we can see these polygons on here, but it, it's okay for this stage. We just want to explore some different ideas and we don't want to worry about how great does this surface look. We just want to try to see what ideas we can come up with quickly. So I'm trying to get this shape going here. Maybe just a little bit of an edge. Then maybe now this is where I can start working on some things for the head. pushing this down and kind of flattening it. And obviously your brush size is going to play a role in how this is going to be pushing the surface and what it's going to look like and your intensity tapping you to get that slider up if your intensity is way high then obviously it's going to push a lot faster and you're going to have to be more careful about that I like to keep it at uh, I don't know 20 to 40 range somewhere in there you're just going to have to play around with the numbers and find out what feels comfortable for you because the settings that I set don't necessarily mean that you're going to respond to them the same way that I do. So it's going to be a matter of you um, just playing around with the tools and getting familiar with them and setting them up in a way that uh, works for you as an individual artist. I don't know about you, but this is just fun for me to sit there and explore uh, making different shapes and seeing what kind of combinations you can come up with, what kind of design ideas. Because, I mean, really, you are making design, design decisions just really quickly on the fly here. And uh, if things don't work out, and if they don't look like they're working right, then it's really easy to to change things. So you can even switch between, you know, this this brush here and uh, using the move brush. So I might take that and put it on my move brush and then start, you know, 
pushing and pulling these shapes even further. So as you get familiar with these brushes and what they do and what's going to be the best thing for what job, you're just going to be flying back and forth between different brushes, different tools, and the different settings. And you won't be thinking about the, uh, the technical things of the program very much anymore. It'll just be more of a uh, free flow of uh, your ideas and trying to get them put down on the canvas. So I'm just going to hit uh, Shift R real quick just to see what this would look like uh, rendered. This is the default uh, render settings that ZBrush has set up. And if we turn our floor back on, I believe it should cast a shadow for us on the ground. Yeah. So yeah, we're starting to get some some cool shapes going on here. And uh, again, it's going to be up to you to kind of push and pull these things around to get some cool combinations. And we haven't spent a lot of time with this model yet. I think I'm back about into the 20 minute mark or so if, if I was just uh, fleshing out some ideas. And it actually would, it'll go a lot faster for you as you become more familiar with these tools. You'll just kind of fly through this stage and have a lot of fun. And you can just crank out a bunch of different ideas and uh, be able to show them to your art director or the client. Or yourself, depending if you're the art director or the client. Pull that forward more. Or have it back. For some reason, back feels feminine to me. But going forward feels a little more alien. So this is where you uh, you can spend <laughs> a lot of your time just kind of trying to make these little decisions as to where you should kind of push and pull this thing. But you can see how easy it was for me to just change my mind and check out ideas and push and pull it back and forth. And depending which one you're going to go with. Trying to make something that looks interesting and feels kind of cool. to the next stage from here so you can get the you can get the idea of uh, 
where we're at with things and what we can do with these different brushes and trying out these different ideas. Okay, we're going to move on to another video and take a look at another another brush. Okay?